The theme adjuster is finally here and this allows you to fully customize your interface experience. There's a lot of cool options in here and some I think are a must to change. In this video, I'll walk you through the adjuster and show you some of the settings I recommend changing. And by the way, this adjuster works perfectly with the new anti-theme by White Tie. So if you prefer that look, I highly suggest checking that out. Let's go. To find the theme adjuster, make sure you're in the latest Reaper version. Then it should appear via options, theme, theme adjuster. And this is what it looks like. It's got a sidebar with all of the different sections and the main area can be resized however you want. What I love about it is how visual and intuitive most of these settings are. As you adjust the sliders, you will see the changes reflected in both the adjuster but also in Reaper. Now the good news is that you're free to go crazy with this, you're not going to break anything. Because at the bottom of this section, you have the option to reset everything to the default settings, so you should be safe. And you can even export or import settings, which is very awesome. Now let's start with the adjustments. Starting from the top, we got one of my favorite features and it's the ability to change the strength of the track color. And if you want to control whether the track gets darker or brighter shade, you can change the background color in the track controls. There's four options, but you can also click here to set one yourself. I love how this looks with the third option and around 55% of custom color strength. By the way, all of these settings apply for both the track panel and the mixer panel. Now, if you're not into the colored labels like me, you can uncheck apply custom color track labels. You can also adjust the global test brightness with this slider. This affects your track labels, transport, meter, etc. Next, we can change how it looks when you select a track. There's an option for the track name to go inverted when selected, and I actually have this disabled. I think it gets very difficult to read. And also there's an option to show a selection dot, which I'm a huge fan of. I think this is a very elegant and non-intrusive way to show track selection. After that, we have custom color palettes, and it works the same way as the previous adjuster. The idea is that you can choose from all of these different color palettes, then you will be able to color your tracks by pressing any of the color boxes. But I think where this really stands out is this button to recolor project using this palette. And it does it in a pretty smart way. So if you had tracks of the same color in your project like this, they will remain the same color but with the new palette. Overall, it's a very cool idea, but the execution could be better. I would love to see this as its own dedicated and compact window where you could quickly load it and to change your track color. It just seems like a lot of work for something I will be doing a lot. And for that reason, I highly recommend this script called Color Palette by Rodilab. It's been my go-to for the last couple of years and it works so well. Next is color processing and I think this is super important. Every monitor looks different and I encourage you to play around with this settings, especially if you find that something looks too dark or could be brighter or have more contrast. And don't worry, you can always reset the track controls. I personally find that the default theme is a bit too dark on my screen, so I like to turn up the highlights and the midtones until it just feels right. Let's jump into the next section, track control. And there's a lot of fun things in here. Starting from the top, we got one of the craziest features and it's that you can drag any of the TCP elements to reorder it however you want. For example, I have always wanted the pan button to be next to the volume knob. Now that's super easy to change by just clicking and dragging. There's a divider opacity slider. This adjusts the opacity of the line that separates the track and the track number. Folder indent allows you to adjust the spacing between the track folders and the children. I like to keep this at half the size, so about 10 pixels. Add some Y spacing lets you control the separation between the buttons. I like buttons to be as tight and compact as possible, so something like 3 and 4 works well for me. Next we have balancing methods, which I personally think it's a must to change. So by default, when you use folders in Reaper, the buttons will not align and it might look something like this. If you're like me and you prefer the buttons to align, there's two methods to choose from. You can choose a stretch name, which will only stretch the track label and align the rest of the bottoms. And this is my favorite way, I think it looks the cleanest. Or you can choose Balance All, where it will simply shift everything to the furthest track indentation. Next we got the Visibility Programmer, and this thing is interesting. In this section, you're able to show and hide all of the different track buttons based on these four conditions. You can set any button to hide if the mixer is visible, if not selected, if not armed, or always hide. For example, if you want to hide the fetch button when the mixer is visible, go to the if mixer visible column and find the button and press the eye icon. Now, when the mixer is open, you won't see the fetch button in the track panel. And the same thing applies for the other columns. 
I've been playing around with these settings for a bit and I think my favorite configuration is as follows. I like to have the pan button next to the volume knob, then the mute and solo buttons. These are the most important buttons for me that I don't want them to move to the next row in the case I have multiple folders. The next buttons I'm okay with them going to the next row like the effects, route and input field buttons. And as for visibility, I like to keep most of the things showing. The envelope buttons I like to bring up with a shortcut so I hide that and the face buttons will only show when I select the track. Next we have more settings for the track panel and I really like that you are able to change the font size. You can also adjust the length of the volume. At the minimum size is a knob but as you increase it it becomes a fader and it can be as long as you want. Same thing with the track label and input length as well as the input font size. The meter width can also be adjusted. It will start vertical like this, then it turns white. And you can set how much border you want. I like to set this pretty narrow to save some space. Now, the section assignments actually took me a bit to figure it out, but it's just so crazy what you can do with this now. So in case you didn't know, in Reaper you can show effects inserts in the track by right clicking in an empty area of the track panel and selecting show effects inserts in the TCP. You will also see show stands in the TCP and let's enable that too. And a lot of Reaper plugins have the option to embed their interface into either the track or mixer panel. So let's load ReQ and right click on it and select show embedded UI in TCP. And let's also make a send by clicking and dragging the route button into this other track. Now back to the adjuster, you can control a lot of these things. For example, maybe you want to have the FETS inserts on the left side. You just click and drag it to the left section. If you want the FETS insert to always show even when it's empty, you can check the pin icon. I much prefer this since you can now use this to quickly add effects to it. Highly recommend setting this up. Another interesting thing is that you can have the effects and the track sense side to side if you set it up like this, or even the opposite size. So if you're a person that meets us without using the mixer like me, these things can be super helpful. There are a few more things you can adjust for these sections, like the minimum and maximum width. Setting a small maximum width allows you to have multiple columns. And I also like to keep the empty section opacity to 100%. I feel like it looks more consistent this way. Now, I want to quickly mention that you can have up to three different configurations for all these. At the top right, you will see that we are actually adjusting layout A, and this is the default layout in Reaper. But you can press the triangle or the square to adjust layout B or C. Now, there's multiple ways to change layouts. The simplest is just by right clicking a track and pressing track layout, and in there you will find layout A, B, and C. Another option is setting shortcuts to these layouts, and you can do that by going into view, screen sets and in the layout section. In here you can set any of your layouts as an action and there's 20 spaces for it. And then you can use any of the actions layout apply custom layout with the matching numbers. And even better if you have the SWS extension you can use the auto layout feature to automatically change the layout based on the name. The next section is envelope controls and it's pretty similar to what we've seen so far. You can change the background color the label and the fader length and the divider opacity. And my favorite thing about this that you couldn't do before is that you can now apply the custom color to the envelope track using this slider. Pretty cool. Next we have mixer controls and this is similar to track controls but a little different you'll see. From the top you can change the background color, the divider opacity and adjust the folder indentation. Then we have some options like folder balance which I recommend to set which will align the meter to the top folder and show effects insert, parameters, and send. Now the mixer panel is where it gets interesting. And I genuinely think this is one of the most impressive things I've done so far. So this is how it works. There's three states that you can set up. When the track is unselected, when it's selected, or if it's on. So for example, if it's unselected, you can change the width and you will notice that there are three layouts depending on how wide you set it. We have the standard size, where you can show and hide four of the icons, and you can also adjust when the sections disappear if they reach a certain high. The next width is the reduce layout, which has all of the buttons nicely condensed, and setting it pretty low, it will switch to the strip layout, which looks like this. And then you will notice that in the adjuster, you can change a lot of the things in here. You can change the order of the buttons, or even adjust the size of the fader, the size of the meter, the label and the input. Now the same logic applies to the other three states. So for example, if you want a sidebar to appear when the track is selected, 
just enable add sidebar. And the cool thing is that you can add the sidebar even if you have the strip layout. I thought that was really cool. The expansion by channel count means how much of the track will expand when it has multiple outputs. For example, with things like Superior Drummer, you will get a super wide channel when you multi out. So for that reason, I like to set this to known so it doesn't happen. Lastly, we got some preferences like clickable icons for folders to hide children, show multiple rows when size permits, and show maximum rows even when fewer will fit. Then some customization for the master mixer like the background, the width, show value, label, and meter values. Now onto the very last section, the transport. And in here, there's some good stuff to tweak like the margins, the length of the rate knob, the width of the status display, and the selection font size and width. You can also change the background color of it as well as the status display color. Lastly, some preferences like the show play rate control, center transport controls, show time signature, use previous events markers, and show play state as stats. And that's it. I already gave my opinion about what I think about the theme adjuster, so I highly recommend checking out this video. So I'm, not, I'm just not gonna say anything. I'll, I'll just let you watch that video because I have mixed feelings about this and I'm not gonna talk about it in here but you can watch that video where I describe everything that's good and bad with this thing so yeah I highly suggest watching this thing so thank you for watching and I'll see you next time bye bye